there, welcome to my video on how to create a mini course in Thinkific. And so just to start out by example, there is a mini course template in Thinkific, but I wanted to give a demonstration on just sort of the content strategy and the content process and how you might break down your first mini course in Thinkific. And just to show you, this is uh, my perspective as a learning designer to sort of think about how you as a teacher will teach uh, your students how to navigate Thinkific because ultimately you are the owner of the software and you're responsible for providing tech support to your students. So I wanted to cover that part and how you might address that in your course and then also go over how the um, first lesson you might break that down. Uh, because I think that's the ultimate challenge that I've heard from many people is where do I begin? And so my example here is if I were creating a mini course on how to launch your online teaching business, uh, here's where I would begin. First, I would set up your course and call it an introduction to the mini course to launch your online teaching business. And in this first uh, introduction, I want to sort of give a video introduction as a video, uh, the welcome video uh, to my students because I want my students to see me, feel the connection, and ultimately know that I am their instructor and I care about their progress. I want to make sure they do their best and I want to help them succeed by providing tips and strategies and habits and behaviors that I've seen work well to ensure students complete their online course. And then I also want to then cover course overview and objectives. Here, this is where I will talk about kind of going back to your landing page, sales page, copy, however terminology you use. I will cover what my course is about, what this course isn't about just to make sure and be very, very clear to my students that this is what we were covering in this course and what we're not covering so that if there's any sort of hesitation or confusion, uh, we set that up early on. And then finally, and most importantly, I wanna show students what results they will derive from completing the course. This is also important to emphasize again. Now I know these points might be covered in your as landing page or sales page, but it doesn't hurt to re-emphasize and uh, put them again here in the course to, uh, again, the idea is to show students this is what they are signing up for and what's expected of them in order to get the results that they want. And then uh, what I like to do that I think is helpful too is um, asking students to submit like a quote assignment, not really an assignment, but more like a profile sheet. And so I can show an example um, in another lesson about how to build a profile sheet. And this is a great way just to get to know your students, um, have them fill out some background information, and you can even have them record a video of themselves so that they um, engage with you. And there's multiple ways that you can do this. Uh, you can have them fill out a PDF sheet like you would in any class by taking them to a Dropbox folder where they can drop the PDF in there. Uh, you can have them record a video. So I could also say, or uh, record a video, record a video of yourself talking um, about your interests and why you signed up for the course. And upload it to the Dropbox folder. So that those are some ways that you might do that. The other way is or um, introduce yourself in the Facebook group. And here um, it would be great for me to sort of say here add a link and say facebook.com slash groups slash um, course creators community. But also keep in mind, this is not a real Facebook group, but if I were to, that was the name of my group, I could stick the link here just to emphasize to students there are multiple ways that they can introduce themselves. As some may record, prefer to record a video, some may prefer to just fill out your profile sheet, and some may just want to introduce themselves in the Facebook group. Uh, just regardless of whichever method, just save it and give students the options. Um, but if you have one method that you prefer or another, you can emphasize that um, here and make clearly that, you know, there's only one option. 
Because sometimes what happens is when you give students a lot of different options, they may uh, get kind of overwhelmed because they're like, oh, I have to submit my profile sheet, I have to record a video, and then I have to introduce myself in the Facebook group. And so another suggestion might be just to uh, go with a simple and easy, straightforward way of just saying, introduce yourself to the Facebook group and have someone set up the questions uh, so that students can respond to this one thread rather than posting their own thread just for an introduction. And then once that's done, you want to think about also creating a video to show students how they would navigate their Thinkific and uh, get into Thinkific because you will be providing that support. And so I just put in a test video here, just to say this would be the video if I were to use about how to navigate your online course. And this video would be more like an introduction to the platform, how to access, you know, the instructor's information, where to find the videos, where to find any kind of assignments, just kind of set up all the logistics early on. And then when you're done making those changes, you can hit save. Now, this is where we go on to the most crucial part is um, the actual lesson. So my lesson, if this is where I'm teaching you how to build your online teaching business, my first lesson is all about testing your market because everyone knows that if you don't test your market, you will not have a viable product. So I'm going to start lesson one with navigating. Oh, lesson one will be all about testing your market. So I give that a title, make sure I label it clearly lesson one so that students are following along in a very logical and orderly manner. Then I'll hit save. And then I would go into my first lesson. And this is where you can be creative. And I just, for this demo purpose, made it a text and just said, you know, here is what I'm going to cover with testing your market. How is this relevant to me? How long does it take? What do I look for? And how do I go about testing my market? And all this, you can either do it as a text. Um, I highly recommend though you make like a slide just to make it a little bit more creative and a little bit more exciting to look at. Because text is a little bit boring and I really don't recommend using a lot of text, but I'm just using this for demo purposes if I were just focused on getting this out there uh, rather than worrying about the details. Uh, but definitely you can create slides in Google Slides, PowerPoint, Keynote. Uh, just make it easy and don't overthink it. And then the next part of my lesson, I want to really go into outlining the goals and topics. And so here, um, when I think about all the different topics that I've just outlined earlier, you might want to think, well, how are the different ways that I can deliver this message? So. Um, about market research, you know, for like for the first example, like how is market research relevant to me um, building this business? And so with that, you can provide a screencast. You can even consider like PDF case studies of um, entrepreneurs um, conducting market research and spell entrepreneurs right, but I'll fix it. And then the question of how long does market research take? Um, and this, you could do, again, screencast examples. You could make a PDF um, uh, worksheet of um, how long it can take to do market research. And then what do I look for when testing my market? This could be a screencast video example, just to say that you know, instead of reading a lot, sometimes people want to hear it, people want to watch it, people just need to see sort of the actual examples and you going over the different examples. And then the last topic is how do I go about testing my market? And here's where I would even go uh, further creative and, you know, broaden the ways that I deliver this by using explainer and or animated videos. And if you have never heard of explainer or animated videos, they're basically you know, a regular video with a little bit more excitement. You could add characters, you can add music, you can add storylines. Um, I'm just going to add that explainer video software, uh, video scribe. I think they now have a new name, but you can just Google vid uh, video scribe, uh, Powtoon, and go anyway. Those are three of the top uh, explainer video software that I highly recommend. And they're all really easy to use, and they have different versions, uh, payment plans, depending on what uh, your needs are. 
And I really recommend them because they really make the video come alive. Uh, when you're talking about testing your market, it's such a dry subject. And you want to think, well, how can I make a topic that's really dry and kind of boring, really exciting and really fun? And so animated and explainer videos really kind of make your videos kind of go to the next level. And they really tell a story and they can sort of weave together stories in different plot lines and it can really just excite and engage your student. So that's just the first um, overview of how I would deliver that. And I'll hit save just so that it saves and just that's just sort of how I would set up your first lesson. And so um, I would even uh, then after I go into my first lesson, I would then take one of this topic and just say if I wanted to build this and say add content and then if this first one was going to be a PDF, I would say, well, it's a PDF. And just and make sure I uh, label this as a, you know, just say PDF. And then make remember PDFs downloadable. And then uh, right now I don't have one, but if I have one later, I can just drag and drop and uh, upload one to uh, this here. But for now, this is just um, a demo and I hope you like this. Hope this was helpful. Uh, leave a comment or question either way. Thanks again. Oh, I do have to upload. Um, I have to find the PDF. Um, oh, there. There's a PDF. Let me upload it. Save it. Now that I've uploaded it, I can now then um, proceed um, with the next one. And so let me look at what my next topic was, is how long does it take? So the idea is I can take each topic and continue to add more to it in Thinkific. And uh, these are just ways that I've suggested that you can cover each topic and deliver each topic. A video is highly recommended, PDF, um, ultimately, also asking your students, customers, and users what's best for them, because sometimes people who uh, use their mobile phones don't really like PDF worksheets. They much prefer videos because it's easier for them to watch. Whatever the case is, make sure you ask and survey and uh, create the type of content that also uh, delivers the lesson effectively, but also meets uh, what your customers and users and students want. So thank you again.